Hi, my name is Jim Hari. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. And if you find some of my videos helpful and you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Are you now still riding the chaotic roller coaster of trying to maintain or have a relationship with somebody with borderline personality disorder? Or have you been doing that? There's a core secret, really a core difficult truth that you must radically accept and make a seemingly what feels like impossible decision in order to be able to further understand what you're going through, why it's not wise at all to recycle these relationships, and why you need help from an expert. I'm out here to help those that resonate with me to break this trauma bond, go no contact or extreme low contact if there's any children involved, and stop riding the chaotic borderline roller coaster of, oh, but you love them so much, and the cognitive dissonance, and the agony, and the pain, and the ongoing abuse, that you as likely a codependent, you get all that mixed up with love, and it's complicated. There's so much to this core secret of understanding that you are not going to be able to move forward, get to the breaking up finally with the person with BPD, or getting yourself into a healing recovery journey, whether you've been discarded, ghosted, you're not sure if it's a final discard or not. The only way to break this cycle that's breaking you down and you're losing yourself is by understanding, radically accepting, and making new choices based on the core secret that you need to know that I'm talking about in this video. Are you somebody who's been with a person with borderline personality disorder? Maybe you're even an adult child of a person with BPD or NPD. Have you been so good to them, so kind to them, overgiving, overcaring, overly compassionate, overly empathic when they don't even see you and they don't even hear you? And then lots of people get angry about that, understandably, because it's painful. But a lot of people want their borderline ex back, or in the on and off and the relationship recycling, people with codependency have their own control needs. Because codependency arises out of childhood woundedness in various different ways to varying degrees and levels for lots of different people. So what are people with codependency doing that is really self, not only self-sacrificing with all you're doing for the person with BPD or you're trying to learn all about BPD and then you're, a lot of people are leaving comments on this channel that, well, this is a borderline and then like they turn into a narcissist and then they did this or that and all, they became a sociopath. This is such nonsense. But why? Are so many of you out there investing in, you know, all of this, these, these notions and ideas that may come from other places, I don't know where, that just are erroneous about what really is true for people with BPD versus narcissistic personality disorder. The fact that there's no such thing as a covert borderline, uh, that that's somebody's attempt to influence a lot of people and in a da dastardly way, really try to shove BPD into NPD. This is the same person that said borderlines are failed narcissists. Okay, so a lot of comments on the channel recently, people with codependency like, I did everything for this person and they never hear me and I'm trying to tell them how I feel or how you've been hurt by them and they don't take any responsibility. All this is true. But here's a question for you today. All this being true, what are you doing? Why are you still abandoning yourself? Do you know why this is an unconsciously driven repetition compulsion cycle within yourself? Do you know that you're losing yourself? Are you losing your ability to concentrate? Can you not, you know, can you not stop illuminating and focusing on the person with BPD? Are you trying to become some kind of an expert in BPD or NPD or ASPD or whatever? 
Because the bottom line is, I mean, people can become experts and get education and all of that. But the bottom line is all of this is people with codependency at base and often unconsciously, you are still trying to make that borderline into, well, A, who you thought they were, and they're definitely not who you thought they were. They're not who you fell in love with. And did you really? Some people, maybe they did fall in love. But for a lot of people, that love is a codependent kind of love, and it gets all tangled up in the core woundedness of a trauma bond that many people have had a trauma bond in their childhood to one degree or another with a parent, especially if they have a BPD or NPD parent. And then, so there's all the woundedness of childhood that really codependency is just a response to that. So is BPD often for many with BPD. So is NPD for other people who've experienced a lot of really, really impacting primal core woundedness in their childhood. And the biggest difference between codependency and BPD or NPD is that people with, with codependency may be more resilient temperament. And for some who have severe codependency, you know, you've really had a lot of trauma in your childhood. You've been really wounded. You might have compartmentalized that away. And no, it doesn't mean you have BPD or NPD. But you can't, you don't know yourself well enough. And you didn't learn skills that you needed to in your family of origin. And the other thing is roles that are assigned in, in like a narcissistic family, dysfunctional family of origin, or a family of origin where there's alcoholism and or, you know, cluster B. An emotionally unavailable parent, maybe don't know why. Maybe even never thought about it. But here's the thing. So people with codependency, calling out people with BPD for their lack of self-awareness, yeah, okay. Pretty much they do lack self-awareness. But have you ever thought about the self-awareness that you're lacking in wanting your ex back and watching 9,000 videos and getting a lot of misinformation from all kinds of people out there want you to pay them because so, they'll help you get your ex back? Getting your ex back is only a diversion, okay? Unconsciously for people with codependency, you may or may not realize this. You want the ex back. Oh, not so much because they're going to change, or, but you might want to keep reenacting, and maybe unconsciously, your codependent patterns of trying to fix, rescue, change, your need for control, your seeking of validation from the cluster B. And I'm not saying that people with codependency are like people with BPD, but there is some overlap, especially in the severity of codependency. So what am I on about here? Have you ever stopped to wonder, maybe about yourself and or other people looking at the narrative across the internet? I mean, there must be what? Uh, a thousand easy, if not 10,000 questions asked about why do borderlines do this? Am I borderline? Am I borderline? Do this? Am I borderline? All over like places like Quora where most of the answers aren't worth your time. There are a few professionals over there and the odd person yeah but the rest of them are, you know hit and miss but but why do you have this voracious hunger to want to know so much more about the borderline or the narcissist or investing your time in saying well as i experience it from my point of view they're the same so i don't care what you say or anybody else says when they're not the same how how, how about some of these questions how lost are you? How much pain are you in? How much are you chasing still a borderline or waiting for a Hoover, wondering if they're going to come back, obsessed with them because you're still abandoning yourself, which is a codependent, often unconscious repetition compulsion pattern all on its own. So people that want the BPDX back, why, right? I mean, you may have many reasons you can list, but I can tell you right now why people are wanting the BPDX back and why you're in like the whole drama of whatever they're doing today, monkey branch. I mean, it all hurts, but you're just not willing yet to radically accept that this person is who you may still love, be attracted to, all oh, the physical intimacy was great, all of that. But what does all of that mean compared to the pain and the agony of not being seen 
by the person with BPD or NPD, like you probably weren't seen enough as a child by a parent. For whatever reasons, not always a clustered parent. These dysfunctional families of origin, and you might say, like many clients, when I start working with them, say, my family was great, until we start really looking at it. And how did you get where you are today? And how are you in so much pain? And why do you want to rescue a borderline? And how come you can't accept that they're not who you thought they were? And all of this takes getting into a healing recovery journey to understand and work through and process. I'm out here to work with you if I resonate with you in that process and journey. The other thing is that people with codependency and people just, if you don't even, if you're denying codependency still and you're just like your person who's been with a borderline or narcissist and or you might have a parent who's one or the other and or you might think they're all the same, whatever the case, why are you so focused on them? You learned in childhood to be so focused on them. What was your family of origin like? This is what I help people to understand and do a lot of healing work around because that's the way to get to no contact with a BPD or MPDX. It's not starting off by trying to figure out the BPD and the NPD because all of that you're doing and then some, make no mistake about it, whether you're aware of it or not, you're doing it to escape your own pain. You're doing it to get back into that, quote, hit of, you know, pleasure hormone so that you don't have to feel what it is you need to feel more of, unfortunately, leaning into the adversity of pain and grief and healing work you know healing the wounded inner child and abandonment wounds and that aren't the same as they are for people with bpd or npd but this is what people with codependency or who've been partner uh, uh, or a favorite person or whatever or you're an adult child of a person with bpd or npd so these families of origin your family of origin in some way or other assigned you a role and the role that you were assigned is the role you're still playing out in your adulthood, likely unconsciously. And people with codependency are going to gravitate, and this childhood woundedness going to gravitate to the cluster Bs. And I've just seen these patterns over 34 years of working with people. So what's really happening for you when you are watching every video you can that tells you what you like to hear, because a lot of people don't, you know, they say that my videos help them, but like, it's hard to hear. Well, of course it's hard to hear because I'm here to give it to you real and straight up. So you have a chance to do something about it. Because if you stay in that echo chamber narrative of how right all the codependents are and how wrong all the cluster Bs are, and I'm not defending the cluster Bs, you're missing the fact that you keep losing yourself more and more and that you never really knew yourself deep down in a personally like having a healthy functional relationship to him with yourself no you've never really had that if you have some if you have some childhood woundedness like a, a core wound of abandonment insecure attachment style all of these things codependents are projecting out in in a way but not for the same reasons as borderlines project out you want that borderline to be who you thought they were because you're looking for something that mom or dad didn't give you unconsciously your wounded inner child that's how you end up with these people that's what creates the dynamics and and the horrific nature and pain of a trauma bond so the message here really is to challenge you to think more if you're one of those people still denying codependency i've seen so many comments on this channel I haven't really been on the channel for about a month or so, but I've been looking at some comments recently. So, so many people. Oh, all the borderlines and narcissists and the all cluster B are all the same. They do the same things. Well, no, they don't. But if you want to have that as your mantra, then how about if I said to you, all codependents do the same things. All codependents have the base pretty same, not same, but similar core woundedness in childhood to varying degrees, various severity. That's why you're chasing after a borderline right now. Oh, it's not just a great physical intimacy. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? But the thing is, so I see these patterns out there of people with codependency, you know, 
rightfully so saying, once well, he's borderline, they don't have any self-awareness. I keep trying to tell him or her this, that, the other thing. Well, it doesn't work. Why are you so invested in trying to change, fix, and rescue them so they can be who you need them to be? That is your woundedness in action because you need from somebody else what A, they don't have at all, and B, what you didn't get from your parents, which you might not be consciously aware of right now. So I see all over the internet that borderlines are complaining about what people like me and other people talking about, you know, how they, how they don't really love, attach to, and, and the core issues of BPD. They really, you know, complain about that and think that, oh, you know, I'm crazy and people don't know what they're talking about. And then we have codependents all over the place. So codependents are saying these borderlines that don't have any self-awareness and it's awful. True. But then where's your self-awareness? Why do you think you keep running down the same path? Don't you feel like a gerbil or a hamster on a, like a wheel by now? What are you doing to yourself? You got to stop and think about that. There's no way out of the situation or the relationship recycling or the on off, or if you've been discarded and they're never coming back, many don't Hoover and you're hurting like, you know what? You need to grasp the reality of that situation. And get into a healing recovery journey. And guess what that means? It means leaning into the adversity of your pain. And I help clients to do that. And one of the steps in, and in beginning with that is to help you to cope with what you're feeling. To understand why. And even though you, you might have well been really hurt and treated horribly by a person with BPD. That's not going to be the only woundedness that you're carrying now it's going to be added on top of something from childhood so this idea that people are calling out people with bpd for their lack of self-awareness and all that they do and how they can't relate and they don't see you and they don't care about you and they don't give back they take 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 you give 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 okay but when are you going to turn the mirror on yourself to 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 like realize that you have some things to learn about you and your core woundedness, your insecure and otherwise attachment styles. Often people with codependency with people with BP or whatever uh, really do fear commitment, have intimacy issues of their own. So you're losing yourself. You're obsessing and focusing on a person with BPD or NPD thinking all cluster Bs are the same. Would you feel like very pleased if I said, oh, all codependents are the same. They're all doing the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of patterns there too. There's a lot of lack of awareness there too. And you're not helping yourself and you're going to continue to make your pain worse. If you're relationship recycling, wanting your ex back, because what you're doing is trying to escape your own pain. You might have a million reasons for why you want the ex back, and, and, and I've heard them all, but that's not really what it's about. And your woundedness as a person who's been with somebody with BPD or still in those cycles and iterations and ruminations and obsessions, you are, please hear this, you are making your pain worse and deeper and losing yourself every day, day upon day upon day. And that's not just you creating your own pain. person with BPD, they have a lot of responsibility, accountability they don't take. But you continue to try to get them back or be with them or relationship recycle to fix it. When really, you need to fix precious you. And these people are not relationship worthy. And people of codependency often have low self-esteem and a lack of self-worth, not strong self-trust, and, and just struggle with their own identities in different ways. Why on earth do you think the answer is trying to fix someone else when you need to heal yourself? And so I see this all over the internet. People who've been with people be, but with BPD, oh, they lack awareness, they, which is true. But so do you if you continue to obsess on them, to want them back, to be waiting for a hoover, to say, well, I can't go no contact. If you define yourself as being a good or bad person by what you might do for yourself or not, what's up with that? 
Like so many people say, well, I can't go no contact because like what if, you know, they take their life. I can't go no contact because it, I wouldn't be being me. I suggest if you think that way, you don't know who you are. You're not yet aware of all that you deserve and that you're not going to get it from a borderline or a narcissist. And this idea that they're all the same and people have been commenting on the channel, that's my point of view and experience. And somebody went on to say that and then say something about three borderlines in their life. One was covert. That term doesn't mean anything, ladies and gentlemen. It's already been defined. Quiet borderline, the subtype by Theodore Million is discouraged borderline. There is no such thing as a covert borderline, except in one grandiose narcissistic psychopath whatever he's doing out there and the same thing with the idea that that person out there said that uh that borderlines have just failed narcissists it's ridiculous but what's not ridiculous but even more so causing you to lose yourself maybe start having trouble in your career and functioning etc in the on off relationship recycling why do you allow yourself, and, and it doesn't excuse people with BPD's behavior, why are you allowing yourself to be a punching bag? What's up with that? Do you think that's the borderline's fault too? Because it isn't. They may treat you that way, and that's not okay, but if you're still there, you still want them back, then you're volunteering to be their punching bag. What up with that? How much have you lost yourself? Here's the thing, right? In all humanity, in all human nature, with any kind of really big challenges, core wounds from childhood, pain that needs to be healed, resolved, people that need to do a self-integration, individuation process, from family of origin, from, from cluster B relationships. You can't go under it. You can't go around it. You can't jump over it. You can't get them back and fix it. No, you can't. You have to lean into the adversity. Working with someone, I'm out here to work with those who resonate with me, being supported, being taught how to cope with the pain that you need to process not only from the relationship, but how that multi-layered and triggered something in you from some type to one degree or another of childhood woundedness. I've been doing this work with people for 34 years. I am an expert in this area. And I can guarantee you, I have never had a client that in, in 34 years of, I don't know how many thousands or maybe a hundred thousand people that I've worked with, the patterns are irrefutable. People with codependency are trying to fix somebody else because you're try, your inner child is trying to fix a parent. You're trying to heal something deep down unconsciously, the inner child is without you knowing that you need to radically accept the borderline of the narcissist isn't who you thought they were and what about you today and i can't say it enough and i can't say it strongly enough because to do anything but turn into the adversity the pain yeah it's scary the process of your own healing and taking care of yourself now in your adulthood wherever you are no matter what's happened with that person with bp in relationship no matter how much was great, stop focusing on that and focus on all the stuff that's really hurting you and continue to rewound and wound you even more. You're losing yourself. When are you going to care enough about you to, to not only hear what I'm saying, because I'm not sugarcoating this for you. I'm not saying, well, it's understandable that uh, because it isn't. It might be from your myopic point of view of where you're really hurting and what you aren't consciously aware of yet. But make no mistake about it. The lack of awareness in the borderline that drives you crazy, and they don't see you, they don't hear you, and you can't fix, rescue, or change them, this is similar to what you're doing. You're lacking self-awareness. You're trying to fix somebody else so that they'll help you with what you may or may not realize your own issues and need for healing is. So rather than always be pointing the mirror at the borderline, the narcissist, the cluster bees are all the same, they're this, they're whatever. Why don't you turn it and look at yourself? 
do you recognize yourself anymore? I don't mean physically, but where are you emotionally? Some people have been really uh, taken a lot of, you know, uh, trauma to their bodies and health is breaking down. And maybe you don't look the same as you looked five years ago or seven years ago if you've been going around a relationship recycles and chaos with the borderline. And, and make no mistake about it. People with codependency, people out there who are the non-borderlines in, in the circles of the borderlines and all these iterations of things, you are trying to escape something that you need to heal from childhood that you may or may not remember that might rise to a certain level of woundedness. For some people, it's really severe. For some people, it's not severe, but it's really important. And it has fractured you. You have a part of self which is your young self, wounded inner child, maybe a couple age stages of wounded inner child or inner teen that is living in your past in the agony of what you went through and they're not even in the here and now with you. That's why this process involves shadow work and integrative work and your future and your mental health, your physical health, your well-being, your reaching your goals in life especially interpersonally, etc., depends on you getting into a healing recovery journey now. Again, I'm out here to work with you, but I resonate with you. You'll never feel, feel ready to do it. You may not be able to imagine how to go no contact from this person. It's a real pull, and it's not really always such an addiction as people think. You need to turn into the adversity of your pain. And be like the kite that, well, you will be learning like the kite to fly, or fly higher in the winds of adversity. And then you'll realize how calm things can be when the kite is like in the air, but the kite doesn't do so well in the air if all of a sudden there's no air movement, right? And codependents and people trying to hang on to and get X's back with BP or NPD or whatever... You're like a stalled kite in the air, only you never really maybe started to soar. Think about that, because you're cheating yourself every day that you focus on BPD, cluster Bs, narcissists, how horrible they are, what they do. I think once people find out a bit about this, you know enough already, but you still avoid yourself. You still avoid your own pain. You still avoid getting into a healing and recovery process, working with someone like myself, if I resonate with you, but you need to work with an expert in this area and an expert that has ethics and morals and values and will put you first because I hear from clients all the time about some other people out there who lack all of that. And obviously I can't say any more than that, but the point is, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep hurting and you're running as fast as you can from your own pain. So how then can you fault the borderline for running as fast as they can from their pain and what they don't know how to face? There's a real similarity there. It's not the same. There's an overlap between codependency and BPD because each of you, the borderlines and the codependents, you do several things that mirror each other, but maybe not for the same motivation reasons, motiva you know, type of motivation reasons. But make no mistake about it, you're going to hurt, you're going to continue to hurt. People do not heal the codependency, do not get to no contact, do not heal, and then make sure to go on and not get into another cluster B relationship without working with someone. This is not a self-help program. This is not a self-help thing. And many people are the adult child of an alcoholic. You know, you're minimizing that. In my family of origin, and I've been all through this healing journey on both sides of the fence and with codependency, etc., and a wounded inner child. And, you know, I had a BPD, NPD mother, but primary covert narcissist. And a malignant narcissist father, psych psychopath, that I had therapists tell me was also a dark triad. And they were both alcoholics. And there were other people in my family, like in, in you know, the bigger, what do you call it, extended family, like my parents' parents, 
narcissist, borderline, alcoholism, alcoholism running really severely strongly on my father's side of the family. And so much alcohol abuse and substance use among so many of them. And I mean, I went no contact from the whole kit and caboodle of them when I was like 25, 27 years old. I mean, I'm 66 today. I've healed it all. I do this work. I've been where you are. I had a relationship with a BPD, NPD alcoholic. We will keep repeating what's stuck inside of us. If we don't shine a light on it to heal it, it's going to keep happening over and over again. Haven't you been hurt enough? Aren't you hurt enough? Aren't you tired of feeling the way you feel? And if you're seeking control to avoid all your pain, which many people are doing unconsciously, don't you think it might help you to try to learn an effective, healthy way of self-control? And yes, for people with codependency, learning how to regulate your emotions, learning how to feel all of the different emotions in your life without needing validation from someone else. Because that's something that wounded you in your childhood where a parent, whether an alcoholic, cluster B, whatever, let you down and didn't teach you, didn't didn't help you to learn how to co-regulate. And I'm not and when I say that to people codependency, I'm not saying so you're like you're borderline. No, you're not. By the way, can I just say too, a lot of things being said on this channel recently in comments and and across the internet. No, we don't all have BPD traits. No, we don't all have narcissistic traits. We live in a narcissistic culture in the Western world. A lot of problems going on. A lot of elitist cluster B control. Okay, I have a lot of things, which tends to make most of us end up in a fawning codependency response because the world is in trouble. It's on fire. But it's a macrocosm of what's really happening in your microcosm personal experience. And if you think that you can rescue and change and fix a borderline or a narcissist, you're just banging your head through a cement wall. And don't you think it'll feel really good when you stop that? Even though then maybe you'll have a really sore head and you won't know what to do with the pain that you're in. But that's where people like me come in to help people understand how to navigate that, how to cope with it, and how to heal it. I want you to think about today, wherever you are in the iterations with a borderline or a narcissist, if you think that they're controlling you, only if you're letting them. And if you think that you can rescue them, uh-uh, just no. And you're trying to rescue somebody that hurt you in your childhood, unconsciously, through that person who's going to continue to hurt you now. BPD, people, they don't age out of BPD. Things don't get better as they get older. They have the approach avoidance conflict, the push-pull, the I hate you, don't leave me. It takes 8 to 16 years of therapy in a psychodynamic modality, whether they've had DBT first or not. DBT is effective. It can help them learn some things about relating can help them learn about emotional regulation, can help them in many ways, but it's symptom management. And you are only abjectly abandoning your precious self. If you think you've got, you know, 8, 10, 15, 20 years to spend with somebody who's going to be doing what they're doing to you now while they're trying to get help. Because lots of people with BPD can get help, might change years down the road. But what about you now? What about what you need? So people with codependency, if you hear nothing else out of this, you are hiding in all of the chaos in the borderline or narcissistic or cluster B relationship, all of that whirlwind of whatever's going on, whatever iteration right now, relationship recycling on, off, got ghosted, but I want my ex back, but will they contact me? Won't they contact? It's all self-abandonment. And you're going to hurt until the day that you choose to focus on yourself, which is healthy, not narcissistic.